Hi, I'm Brian Dickinson, and this training bite shows you how to set static and dynamic drain times for a UVM simulation. Let's quickly review ending a UVM simulation. Remember the objection mechanism controls when a simulation ends. UVM immediately tries to end the run phase and you must prevent the end by raising an objection at the start of a sequence. When a sequence is finished it must drop the objection to allow the run phase to end. After a certain period of time if there are no further objections raised then the run phase can end. This time is called the drain time. So why and how can we specify this drain time? The purpose of drain time is to allow data items to propagate to the DUT and, for example, be captured at the output and sent to a scoreboard. The default drain time is zero, so if we don't specify one, the run phase stops immediately when the last objection is dropped. If we can predict our required drain time, it can be set as an absolute delay. In a run phase task, we get a handle on the objection mechanism by calling get objection off the phase argument and then we call set drain time from the objection handle. The method takes two arguments, a reference to the object specifying the drain time, we use the keyword this, and a time value. So that's easy, but we may not be able to predict an explicit delay. We may need to wait for a specific DUT output or for a register to reach a certain value. A dynamic drain time can be set by implementing the task all dropped in a test bench or other UVM component. This task will be automatically executed to completion when the last objection is dropped and we can implement our dynamic drain time in this task. All dropped has four arguments which are rarely used. The first is a handle on the objection mechanism. The other three are derived from the last dropped objection. They are a reference to the object which dropped the last objection, the description argument from the drop objection call, and the number of objections dropped, which is usually one. Multiple all dropped implementations may, can be executed but only those in the propagation path of the last objection dropped. When an objection is dropped it propagates up the hierarchy from the drop location to UVM top. Therefore all dropped execution is bottom up and hierarchical but only from the drop location. So if a sequence of sequencer SEQR1 drops the last objection, only all dropped implementations in the path SEQR1, Agent1, UVC1, TestBench and UVM Test Top are executed. No all dropped implementations under UVC2 are executed. Also, if the UVM 1.2 set propagate mode feature is set to zero, then objections do not propagate up the hierarchy but, but are sent directly from the sequence to UVM top. Therefore all dropped implementations in the sequencer, agent, UVC, test bench or test class are not executed. I suggest you do not want to use the set propagate mode if you use all dropped. Drain times also apply if you are using the runtime subphases of UVM. Remember all run and subphase tasks run in parallel. All run phasing starts at the same time and the latest completing thread determines the end of run phasing and the start of extract phase. Objections must be raised and dropped for each subphase otherwise they will immediately terminate. Individual drain times can be set for each subphase, remembering that the default drain time is zero. For more information on runtime subphases and domains, please see the UVM runtime phasing training byte. Static drain times must be set if required by calling set drain time in a runtime subphase task. The drain time will be executed when the objections are dropped. All dropped tasks are executed for every runtime subphase, but only in the propagation path of the last dropped objection. All dropped is executed after the static drain time. 
At the end of the dynamic drain time, if no further objections are raised, the run phase ends. Let's see a quick example. I have a single YAP UVC in the simulation with all dropped implementations in every component. Sequencer, driver, agent, UVC, test bench and test class. Each implementation simply waits 100 nanoseconds and prints a message except for the test class all dropped. The test class all dropped also prints the task arguments, source object, description and count. If I run a simulation, we can see that the last objection is dropped by the YAP012 sequence running on the sequencer in this path. The objection drop triggers the all dropped execution in the objection propagation path, i.e. sequencer, agent, YAP UVC and test bench but not the driver or monitor. It also executes the test class all dropped which prints the task arguments telling us the last objection was dropped by the YAP012 sequence with the description argument of YAP012 SEQ and a count of 1. If I modify this example to use the UVM 1.2 option to turn off objection propagation, which I do from the test class and rerun the simulation, the objection is no longer propagated to the components so that all dropped implementations are not executed. So that was a quick look at setting static and dynamic drain times in UVM. I hope you found it useful. Thank you.